Uh, Thanks, Rio. Welcome to uh, the DevSync. It's uh, December 2nd. Um, and uh, we're going to kick it off with Derek. He's got a short timeline here. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to jump a little early. Uh, so, yes, my um, continual CAD progress on the Mark II. Um, I've made my way to the display housing and um, I've been working on that mostly today and, and I've got it in pretty good order. Um, because of uh, the, the, the switch and stack up, as I've mentioned many times, um, the way it gets mounted also had to change. Um, but I've got that all sorted out. Uh, and tomorrow I will be working on the buttons and um, hopefully also spending a little bit of time trying to uh, get those the tolerance on that a little better. Uh, there, there's, they were pretty good the last time I left off on them, but uh, they still had some some room for improvement. So I'll be addressing that. Um, nothing really on uh, software side. Um, I you know yesterday I mentioned the GUI stuff I was kind of ready whenever you guys are um, to implement on the the Wi-Fi setup. I added a couple screens in Figma. So if anyone wants to discuss that when, when necessary, just give me. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. Thanks, Derek. Uh, Ken, do you have a cat who's walking on your keyboard or something? No. <laughs> I'm sure some weird no. noises. OK. Uh, well, why don't you go ahead then? then. OK. <laughs> So uh, let's see. So I continue working on trapping the TTS chaos that Michael has uh, experienced. And I can now produce that um, consistently so I can fix that or try to fix it. Uh, and it also looks like part of the problem when you get into that chaos mode is that the playback control skill has bad audio service status. So it doesn't bother sending it a stop which is part of the problem. It doesn't know it's playing. Um, but the important point was that I was able to reproduce the chaos. And it only occurs with long running uh, TTS uh, that, that happened to, and when it breaks, it has to be an intermittent break. So what I had to do is I had to actually go into Mimic 2 and simulate like every fifth uh, request. Say, okay, now I'm gonna throw the, uh, you know, the timeout exception or the 304 exception and uh, and then see what the result was on the system. And it and it holds up really well because all the Q&A skills now have clipped very radically at nothing more than a sentence or two. In fact, some of them are actually clipped in the middle. Uh, so you don't see it there. You have to get a long running answer. And the only way I was to do that was to ask about the story, the Odyssey. And so that takes a while and then when the mimic two will after because i have it like every fifth or seventh like throwing an exception when it throws an exception the mimic one will start playing and if it catches it between sessions they'll both go off and you can't stop either and it's very annoying so now that i can reproduce that i should be able to make more progress on getting that fixed um i filed a bug for DuckDuckGo. Uh, it throws an exception on what is helium um i noticed that most of the q a's are timing out now um, uh, I, obviously there's the, the build issues with booting and, and losing pairing and all of that. Uh, and then I also noticed that this, this build was running slow. Um, I was able to actually get the, uh, the Wi-Fi logs and see how the bring up sequence goes, which is cool. And it's like I said, there's only three statuses from what I was doing. Um, I'm assuming Mike will speak more to that in a minute. Uh, but I backed that off because it was like running every 15 seconds and it was slowing everything down. So I backed that off significantly to like five minutes and things are running better. But the important breakthrough was I was able to reproduce Michael's chaos um, because it was difficult actually to reproduce. And so I'll be fixing that um, relatively shortly. Okay, great. Um, well, it sounds like Michael might be doing some work that's related to that. So why don't you go next? Sure. Um, so let's see, this morning I got in some tests for the network manager. Um, so this is the uh, software that 
based on Ken's stuff, pings the DBus uh, right now to the AW Connect on the Mark II board and asks it, you know, connectivity status for the network and the internet. Um, and then just a little bit ago, I got in the Mark II enclosure, there's now a, a thread that's that's polling this basically every so many seconds, checking connectivity, and it outputs events on the bus. Um, so it, it outputs both status changes. So I, I'm connected, I'm disconnected for network internet, and uh, every every polling interval, it also outputs a status message with the same information. Um, I did discover, though, just, just before we got on, my internet went out um, while I was watching the log, actually, of the connectivity status on the Mark II, and it continued to report fully connected. So to me, this suggests that when it connects, the network manager uh, checks internet status, but from there on after, I don't think it continues to check. I think it it believes whatever it was at the beginning, it must still be connected to the internet. So I think I'm going to have to, in the enclosure thread, make sure that it's also doing the DNS check um, and the URL check out to you know, Google or something to verify that it can still actually reach a website, even though the, the, it believes it's still connected to the internet. Yeah, yeah, we need to... Oh. We we are making a clear distinction between <clears throat> uh, uh, Wi-Fi network connectivity and internet connectivity, right? Yeah. What's what's odd is that the the DBus network manager, the the status. If you read the documentation, when it says it's fully connected, it says it can reach the internet, and that's the status it's reporting. And it's it may have been true when it was first connected, but later on, it's it's no longer true, even if you keep asking it. Am I understanding uh, you correctly that you're not seeing the network go down when the network goes down? I'm not seeing the network go down because the network net didn't go down. The internet went down, so my cable modem was unplugged. Uh, and it's it's still, at the time it first connected to Wi-Fi, it could reach the internet. And so it believes, apparently, as long as it's connected to the same Wi-Fi, it will reach, be able to reach the internet forever. Uh, so we need to do... So that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what what you're saying. So what you're saying is that your router still had an internal connection? Yes. So you were connected to the edge, but not connected to the internet. Yeah, it was right? connected to my Wi-Fi router, but not to the, got it. the internet. Got it, yeah. got it, got it, got it, yeah. So we have the we have all the tools necessary here, and, and now now we'll have the distinction. So we'll have network, and once I add this extra thing, it'll, it'll be internet now or not, basically. OK. Um, yeah, um, we can definitely do a, a workaround on our side, but we should also report that uh, as a bug. Uh, I have to, yeah. See, I, I have to, I have to dig through the docs and see if there's. I don't see anything that says, like, internet as of right now or as of it as it started. Um, so yeah, maybe that is a, just a, just a bug, or maybe there's some other property I need to dig dig into. Uh, yeah, so I'll check if on. That's a bug. You report it to Ubuntu, right? I'm not sure who who runs Network Manager. I think it's a that's it's it's, no, it's the GNOME project that runs that. Yeah, maybe there are other there are other ways you can check the actual connections and seeing whether or not they're up. Maybe we should that you were checking at the device level, right? Or at the, even at the at the network manager level. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you drill down into like a device or like a connection if you get the same result. Yeah, I'll have to check that too. So I'll check on that tomorrow. Um, let's see. The other thing I got today is uh, my I, I got my my model finished. My TTS model finished to a certain level. Um, and was able to run it on the Mark II, uh, and it runs great. So it, i getting a real-time factor of about 0.4, so it runs 2x faster than real-time. Uh, and, I mean, the, it's not, you know, the highest quality ever when I hear it with my headphones, but on the on those speakers, it sounds just fine. Um, so this should be a viable option for us to have uh, offline neural TTS on, on the Mark II that runs in reasonable time, as long as you... If you have you know gigantic sentences, it might take a second or two. But um, if you have short stuff, or you can break it up at uh, clause boundaries, even it'll it should perform just fine. So I'm going to start uh, training. I have one that's that's got multiple voices, and no single voice sounds the best. So I'm going to train a single voice one off the uh, Kusal dataset and see how that sounds. OK. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, do we have a name for this? I don't know. Should I, I mean, should I call it Mimic 3 or something else? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll leave that to you guys. Uh, if you, yeah. I mean, Mimic is our 
uh, <coughs> ES moniker. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could call it Mimic 3 or... I feel like it should be like Is a it... Mimic 2.5, like it's... Yeah, if it's still, I mean, is it still using the Takatron stuff? No, no, this is using, um, it, it's an advancement above that. It's a, it's a model called VITS. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's basically, a, they, they did a combination of something called Glow TTS and a, a vocoder. They, they jam them together in a single network. And so it, it actually does an end-to-end -end phonemes straight out to the audio. Uh, so you don't have to run a separate vocoder stage, which is great. That, that uh, sounds like a yeah, Mimic I mean, 3. Yeah, I think oh, okay. I, if you're, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, that sounds great to me. Okay, I'll, do, I'll call it Mimic 3, and uh, we should be able, I, I can also train for different languages, any of the languages supported by um, my Groot NLP library. So once I get something for English, I'll, I'll concentrate on others. I think, well, and, and I I think that, you win um, the award for most significant contribution in your first week of work at any <laughs> workplace ever <laughs> I don't, like we get a little trophy <laughs> <laughs> we have these cool coins you know you get one of those oh yeah oh yeah i got one of those i think okay. and i got the cool the cool book with the trolls so <laughs> all right well that, that's awesome a new uh, you know getting a new um uh, uh tts model in there is that's really cool thanks um, sure we need, uh, but there's a lot more to than just the TTS model, right? There's the whole, all the infrastructure around it, and, uh, such as um, we've got, I don't know if this applies only to Mimic 1 or it's 1 and 2, but um, we've got these hints in there where, because um, you're going straight from, you know, um, English as, as it is written, not as it is spoken, right? So we've got this database where people could um, write in uh, actual transliterations, like the proper pronunciation for various words and things like that, right? Um, um, make sure it integrates with that and all that kind of thing. So there's... Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. So so this is based on on what I've done with Larynx, where it's it's the model is not actually trained on English as it's written. There's a, a normalization step and then a phonemization step. And and those are, are done using a, a library I wrote called Groot. Um, they, they could also be done uh, from using eSpeak depending on licensing uh, with that. So it, it produces, Groot. what's that? I am Groot. I, I, that's why, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I called it Groot, but I spelled it with two U's just, oh. <laughs> to, just to make fun of English pronunciation. Uh, so so it, it uses a database with the phonetic pronunciations. If it can't find it in there, it guesses it with a conditional random field model. Um, so if, if you add if you you can update this database with pronunciations, what I'm saying. If as long as they're in the right the right phonemes, I'm using the International Phonetic Alphabet for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I would take a look at what we have, and uh, um, I wasn't aware that you guys had talked about that and decided to do this project, but it's, it sounds really cool. Um, but yeah, let's let's make it into you know, at least if not if you're not going to work on these particular aspects right now, at least uh, record them as you know to dos to turn it into a fully you know realized product. Yeah, OK. While you're at it, taking uh, up where Michael just said, because I wasn't aware of this, if we do have hints for Mimic 2, um, I noticed that when you ask who Abraham Lincoln is, and it says Washington D dot C, and they're both capitalized, it says Washington D C. So that should be D space S E E. Uh, yeah, there's actually a web page you can go to change those things. things. Sorry, yeah. sorry, we talked over each other. What did you say? I'm just saying we have a website where you can go out there and, oh. and specify those things. And yeah, we were literally right thinking, yeah, we were saying the same thing. Just, same just warning that, that that website is not in an automated fashion to like take those and then implement them. So um, right. currently nothing, like no one's taking those and, and adding them to the, to the service. Um, right. We're collecting them though. Yes, yes. Um, but I, I think they're also they're also largely I would imagine that they're largely based on what people type in uh, and and see how mimic two pronounces things and so they're going to be you know what is the what is the the spelling that gives me the best pronunciation in mimic two rather than like say the international phonetic alphabet or something like that um, so yeah. 
But they'll at least give us a list so of things. Australian, that... you'll say assume instead of assume, and you'll look at all confused. Wait, what do I say? <laughs> there, there is an extra layer too that Groot does that may need to be the website may need to be need to be modified. So, you know, in, in English, you can get better hints at a pronunciation depending on the part of speech. Usually, a noun versus a verb, and so it, it distinguishes that too. I don't know if uh, we could. I don't know if we could add that to the website or if people would be willing to go to that level to, or if they even, I mean, I, I didn't really think about this before delving into this kind of stuff, you know, just kind of automatic. Um, if they think, oh, I, I pronounce that like this, but only when it's, you know, a noun or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those all sound like uh, great issues to just start documenting as, you know, uh, to do's for, uh, for a future uh, sprint or project. I, w I would suggest that people generally are pretty terrible at thinking about that sort of stuff, unless they're like really deep on, um, you know, linguistics and things. Um, but it, I wonder if uh, asking for a sample phrase along with the word that they think is um, not pronounced correctly would be helpful because then we can see the context in which they're thinking about it. Yeah, that would be great. Forget the sample sentence. Mm, yeah. But yeah, all, all great ideas. OK, cool. Great. You've just made more work for us. I just, just made more work. Yeah, glad to, glad to help. Thanks. <laughs> Thought we were going to run out. Um, all right, great. Uh, so uh, I guess, why don't you go? Um, Wolfram Alpha is in release to stable. Uh, so it's it's even on the um the stable images which is cool uh but the other qas qa guis are not in stable yet i don't think because they're relying on they're waiting on these test changes um that are in core so um yes gonna do uh one thing that we talked about yesterday michael that you missed is that um like we want to get the the next xde changes in um, but like we've like for the last couple of weeks, I've been hitting a bunch of just bugs and things with the, with the last round of XDU changes. And, you know, as much as we, uh, review code and, and everything, like there's just always things that pop up when you actually start to use things in real life. So, um, I, the plan now is to, to do a, a point release of core, and then merge in the next XDG changes so that there's a decent amount of time to sort of test those in the wild before they get um, marked as stable and uh, and all of that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do a, a point release of core as the, the, the short version. Um, what else happened? Uh, oh, I also fixed the Pandora thing. Um, so Pandora is now fully up to date in the marketplace. Um, uh, I, I haven't tested it because I'm Australian and Pandora left us long ago, but, um, if other people have accounts, that would be good to tech. Um, and yes, focusing on trying to focus on community PRs a, a fair bit at the moment. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm testing out your, your Pandora mm -hmm. skill now if it's if it's been pushed. Cool. I'll let you know. Great. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, Chris, other Chris. Yeah, so I've been um, testing my changes to the boot sequence today. Um, I got the skill service to start in 15 seconds if you take out the Wi-Fi connect skill, which currently runs for a minute, <laughs> but it currently emits for a minute. <laughs> um, so that's good. So as soon as we get that kind of straightened out, the uh, we'll get the skills loading in very, very short order. Um, and everything else uh, that was in the skills that what didn't belong there is now running in the enclosure and it seems to be doing fine. I haven't tested the actual pairing and Wi-Fi stuff yet, because I think I was waiting on some of Mike's stuff and um, 
and I'm a little worried about some of the bugs that have been reported about identity files disappearing and stuff. And I, I don't know, if, you know, I'm a little concerned that, you know, I'll, I'll try to test my code. I won't be testing my code. I'm testing something else. <laughs> so I, I don't is that related sure. to the XDG stuff or something else you think? It feels, yeah, it is. So I, and I, I don't know. I mean, you just need to talk to Gaz and see where we are, where we are with that stuff because, um, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. I almost don't want to update my dev box because I'm afraid I'll goof it all up. If I, I, I proposed a change to to dev because it's like it's something that's in mainstream as well, um, and you know, okay, pointed out that um, it was kind of done intentionally that way so that if the if the migration was you know um, not completed successfully, then it would then it would try again in the future. Um, uh, yeah, so it and I can I can understand that logic, but it, we're we're seeing a, a genuine, literal problem right now on the Mark II, um, versus a theoretical problem um, elsewhere. So I think, it, my I think it would make sense for us to just do this fix on the Mark II feature branch um, because the whole problem is a short term problem because we can pull the whole migration code out, you know, after the next major release anyway. Um, so yeah. Something else I noticed in my testing today was that every time you do go get configs, if your config file is not in the right place, you get one of those deprecation. I'm getting like a hundred of them every time I <laughs> boot my device. So I don't know if there's a way to you know make those a little quieter, but um, they're everywhere <laughs> in the log files right now. If your uh, config file is not in the right place. Yeah, right. There shouldn't be that many of them, but so. Just on closure startup alone, I have six. Okay, we should look <laughs> at that. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, it's a minor, it's kind of minor compared to everything else, but it's just something I noticed while I was yeah, starting yeah. thinking. Well, yeah, um, and the quieter we can make the logs, the more the actual problems jump out at you. Yes, so, um, so I think what I need to do now is integrate with the stuff that Michael pushed up today. He and I are working on the same branch right now. We're kind of working on the same thing. Um, so um, I do want to talk to him too about what he's done because I think I want to see some changes. But um, but yeah. So I mean, we're I'm getting I think we're getting pretty close on the uh, on the happy path at least of the startup sequence. Then I need to start getting into, you know, what happens, you know, how do we um, use this stuff to trigger the Wi-Fi skill and how to, how to use it to trigger the pairing skill. Because right now I'm just saying, okay, I'm paired, I'm, 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 I'm paired and connected, you know, what happens on a normal boot and that's what I'm doing right now. So there'll be extra testing for that and there'll be extra changes for that as well. But we're, we are making progress. Michael and I are making progress, let's put it that way. We should be able to formulate the startup sequence in terms of these these network connected and internet connected events now too, right? And you have a no internet in the spec, but I wonder like for the, for the non happy path, we probably would need to handle cases where it's disconnected and, and connected and all that. Right. Uh, not well for boot up sequence. I think it'll be, it won't be as, are you talking about just the boot up sequence or about like in general, if we lose connectivity? I think the boot up sequence too, or if, you know, instead of having timeouts, I guess is what I'm getting at is we we should wait for particular connected events, right? To 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 move steps forward and and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's, that, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. I think what you have coded is good for like a continuous check, mm -hmm. but just having that initial check going through, we may have to either you know move some things around once you've done or um, implement something a little different. Okay. Um, for the boot sequence, but that's why I wanted to talk to you about, and we can do that tomorrow. Sure. Right. Yeah. So if I understand what you're saying there, uh, Michael, that we move away from a more of a polling mechanism and into an, uh, an event driven system. Yeah, it should be there, there should be no timeouts and unless you're I mean, if it's interacting directly with the user, that's a different story. Uh, but if it's booting up, it should be event driven, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to you know, if, you, if you time out of trying to get to a, a network connection, then, then what? <laughs> yeah, then, then what? There's, if there's no human there. Well, <laughs> we know we know that one. Then in the middle of the night, it says Wi-Fi disconnected, right? Well, <laughs> right yes. Yeah. Same thing with pairing. There's a lot of we probably shouldn't time out of anything during the initial boot. 
or at least until you get past pairing. Yeah. Can I can I just double check, Chris? Did you say it takes fifteen seconds to boot the skills service? Until you get to the Wi-Fi connect, yes. That is incredible. Nicely done. Because right, just memorying, if my memory serves me correctly, it used to be like, now. yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> like, minutes, yeah. <laughs> A major improvement for sure. Yeah, that's great. And so, um, and the Wi-Fi, you're saying then you get to the Wi-Fi and then it takes another minute or whatever, right? And that's, that's, that's only something. because the, the init method of the Wi-Fi skill actually goes through all 60 seconds of of the of what it does right now right so as soon as we yank that out and make it event based then mm -hmm. it will be 15 seconds complete awesome that's really great yep cool so I mean, we get to an initialized state that fast because that's the that's, that's still the slowest at 15 right. seconds of all the of all the things so right. we'll get to initialized state pretty quickly that's great yeah because th that's that gets us really close if not to the point where you know the device boots up and it's and it's ready, like Mycroft, like we were talking about, like the Mycroft system can be ready before the internet's connected and before Wi-Fi is connected, right? Like we've got an operational system. Now it goes out and tries to find all the things that it needs, right? But the yeah. system- I'm, I'm really happy with the work we're doing. I think it's gonna be some pretty cool stuff when we're done. Yeah, great. And hopefully a lot more stable. Yeah, God, I hope so. Oh, and I have, I found a bug today, which I think you will all find interesting because I think it might be causing some of our problems. So um, there's logic in the uh, message bus client that something about on error, it retries getting um, a message bus con connection because you know obviously you, you couldn't get one, so it keeps retrying. Um, but I think that might be happening on, um, on an error when you try to emit a message because I, so I'm, I'm emitting messages um, when each of the services are done initializing. And when I, when I emitted a, um, a, the first one, which is the speech is done, um, that never got emitted because I think it, it triggered this loop that wasn't connected to the uh, message bus. So I, ha I haven't completely nailed it down yet, but I found it very interesting that and my, my whole startup sequence just stopped because I'm, I wait for all three services to be ready. And I never, I never got the speech one because it you know, like got swallowed somehow, um, which I thought was very interesting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that deeper and provide more information when I have it, but. I'm you sure it didn't get admitted before you uh, hung uh, onto the message bus? Before your client was connected? No, because client connection. It's not like it's not like they're stored and saved. Yeah, they are, and yeah, and but so what? What I'm doing here is, you know, is if, if I don't get it initially, then I go back and look and, and do and check the process status and see if it's there. So um, anyway, I'm going to take a further look at it, but I think you know if, if that really is a problem, I think that could be the culprit for some other things that we've been seeing some weirdness. As you right. restart things. Cool. Well, keep us up to date on that too. Um, all right. So, how are we doing with respect to um, all of the administrative stuff? You know, uh, keeping our Jira up to date and, uh, you know, the sprint, the sprint 22 is, the... is done. Nice. Did you actually close it? No, I, I thought I wanted to wait. I didn't want to just like quietly do that by myself. I... I think we need, we need I a celebration we should here. Have a little, yeah. Look at that. You didn't want to. You didn't want to unceremoniously close the sprint. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, I'm going to push the button right now. All right, we need a little trumpet. Do 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 do. Done. Awesome. All right. So um, now our official sprint is the sprint. Twenty-two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We've moved a half sprint forward. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, so for uh, have have you gone over with uh, Michael uh, uh, how our our sprints are not really sprints? Um, yes. Right now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. He has a ticket in this sprint actually too for his network connectivity work. So it's. I mean, maybe it's helpful for the community too. Like the 
we, we use the term sprint because it's the, <laughs> the concept in Jira that we use to manage our work is in sprints, but we're not actually using them in the, like in the pure, um, agile sense, agile sense <laughs> of the term sprint. So not at the moment, at least, you know, we're Did you plan on changing that though, from what I understand, we'll actually start doing that soon. Yeah. It seems like it'll be, yeah, it'll be useful to adopt that going forward. Um, but yeah, we basically, a, a sprint thus far has just meant all of the tasks related to achieving a particular milestone, however long that happens to be. Um, Months, years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so. uh, but yeah, we are going to be refactoring uh, you know, those into uh, epics, which will be the new home for groups of related tasks. And then the sprints will just be you know, fixed time periods. I think we've been getting better at getting some tighter scope around our current sprints as well. Um, because yeah, previously sprints were months and months and months of work. Um, because just well, people would dump would... things into sprints just because it was the active sprint. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who did that? <laughs> so it became a slog instead of a sprint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, Oh, yeah, I think my my tickets are up to date. I am working on what I'm working on. Okay. Um, although the uh, skill update has got a bunch of stuff in there that may not be done in phase one. Um, the skill. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow you. The skill. There's update. a MYC 940. Uh, I looked at that. And I didn't no. know if that would. Oh, I can share my screen. Share. That would be too easy. Or maybe it's not that easy. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So this ticket here, um, there's a lot of things we wanted to do to the skills startup sequence. But there's also stuff we wanted to do after the startup sequence is over. Like how, how do we identify, how do we update skills um, going forward? And I didn't know if you wanted me to go as far as, you know, there's some of these things in here, like, um, you know, only updating one skill at a time, um, non scriptal skill updates may be performed at certain times, that, that kind of stuff. I didn't know if that was phase one type work or if that was stuff we can put in an epic and do it another time. Uh, yeah, and definitely we should break all these out, the ones that aren't already done, put those into an epic. And, um, and I think... Um, well, because it's probably gonna a, require some MSM changes too, I would think. Well, yeah, and I think there's, you know, we've talked about had them having a, another pass at the whole, at the skills stuff anyway, like a more of a holistic thing. So maybe we can wait mm -hmm. for that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, I think that maybe 2A is um, worth doing now. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And will, uh, I think, yield a better user experience. And in fact, I mean, you know, we might want to just totally hack that and say, make it 30 minutes. Because you know, if we're doing demos, you know, probably uh, don't want to have any skill updates happening in the middle of a demo. Yeah, skill updates happen once an hour. I could just say the first hour is after, you know, an hour after you boot it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <That'd> be fine. <laughs> instead of you know whatever the last hour it, it thought it knows about is. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and then the other ones can go into you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, an epic around fixing up the M all, all the M MSM and uh, you know aggregate the other MSM issues we've got in there. Cool. Cool. That makes me very happy. Yeah, that'll be great. The other thing I'm going to run into too is I don't know. We talked to, like right now is a Mycroft Ready event. We're talking about 
either adding or replacing it with a Mycroft started event. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, like, I, how that might impact other parts of the system. I don't know if anything actually looks for a Mycroft ready event right now. There may not be anything that actually, actually looks for it. Um, last time I checked, there wasn't anything, but if I do change the name of it, that's a, that's a change in. Hmm. There's probably, the yeah, there's probably downstream know. projects at, at the very least that are using that. But I, I would wonder, cause Mycroft started is like the system, the system is, is initialized, right? But I wonder if like Mycroft ready in my mind. Like has... It's still a bit ready as the, as a, you can talk to it now. Like right yeah. now started is going to be, Hey, all initialization stuff's done. So I could still use ready as, okay, you, this is when you can interact with the system. That's yeah. Normal. Yeah. Yeah. So I can still admit it just maybe later than we normally would or a different time and a different and do it in different code than we normally would. Well, but like, for example, if, um, if some, if, if someone's got a, a, a version of core that, that doesn't connect to the back end, for example, so there's no pairing, you know, then started and ready are going to be much closer together when you don't need to yeah. worry about that sort of stuff. But yeah. Um, and one thing yeah, I am I trying to do with some of this new code is, um, is implement the activity um, framework too. If we're running, if we're running something new, I want to get that tested out. And yeah. If you right now, examples of it in code. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think that's good because it's um, very. It's just really a naming convention at this point, and yeah, uh, and it'll give us, you know, whoops, give us uh, um, some real world examples of seeing it in practice, and you know, maybe see how see how useful it is, and uh, maybe start to use it in debugging and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay, sorry, that was a lot of yapping. I'm done. <laughs> Um, well, you know, uh, I don't know how often you guys are able to get together uh, throughout the day, but, um, you know, there, there is a lot of this stuff to catch up on. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hope you're able to keep the communications uh, fluid and flowing and, and, you know, not get stuck in a uh, corner by yourself too often. So. No, I think, I think we're all pretty good about talking throughout the day. I think a lot of this is keeping you up to date because you, you haven't been here in a couple of days. So. <laughs> And no, some I of the stuff, you know, like I, I haven't talked to Michael in like, or to Mike in like two hours. So, okay. <laughs> All right. but yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. It looks like a really good progress this week. Um, so, good job. All right. Well, uh, sounds like that's it. it yeah. <laughs> well, there. I, I will see you guys uh, next Monday. And, uh, have a good weekend if I don't see you before then. Michael, right. do you have him? Yeah, sure. Do you want to hang on after? No, the other Michael. Michael Lewis. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. I got, I've got some. You, you, I, I thought, I thought Michael Hanson was Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm Mike. I yeah, gotta, I got to remember. Michael Lewis broke that rule though. So. You did. I <laughs> did. Nah, it's right well, out of my hand. to learn the rule. Uh, also, your 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 uh, name your... tag says Michael Hanson, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Just... <laughs> Touche. All right. Adios, all. Right. all. All right. See ya. Who wants to take all the right. lead? Oh. Um, I can go first. It's been an eventful day. Wait, no, no. Oh, no. Derek's going to go first. The announcement of the. Oh, Derek. Yeah, well, this is the well run, the well oiled ship here. Yeah. Uh, for everyone I forgot. Well, well, first, first we have to say the date and all that. I've never done that, so I guess I could try. If if Gez is going to uh, cut out the beginning, then then yeah, I'll just I can do the intro then. Okay, you know, I'm leaving this it. whole thing in. Uh, <laughs> this is the blooper reel. Right? That would be my recommendation. Cut it out and put it at the end. Okay, all right. Take well, take it away, Michael. All right.